Welcome to Hidden Squids Gaming. If you see my other videos, you know they're usually more objective based and more analytical. This one's going to be a little more subjective because I'm going to be putting easy, medium, and hard on rankings of bosses in Darkest Dungeons. Other bosses could be easier for you or harder for you depending on the lineups and your memory of them. A bad experience or two with a boss can really make you think a boss is harder than it may actually be. I will only be including bosses you can actively plan for, meaning there will be no collector, no shambler, and I will also be excluding the darkest dungeon. This does include Wolf and the Shrieker since they have their own dungeon dedicated to them. This leaves us with the 10 bosses, Necromancer, Prophet, Swine God, The Flesh, Hag, Brigand Pounder, The Crew, Siren, Wolf, and the Shrieker. I won't be placing these 1 through 10 because there's so many multitudes of lineup and RNG chances that a boss that is hard could actually be easy and a boss that is medium or easy could obviously ascend into next tier. I'm going to pick them on the overall consistency of how hard they are. Some easy bosses could maybe be hard, some bosses be easy depending on the crits and the dodges you get, but we have to consider their attributes and their general game plan. Necromancer. Verdict. Easy. In both of my playthroughs, I never thought hard about the Necromancer or lost anyone to the Necromancer. I only know if I've really had people go on death's door against the Necromancer. He doesn't have a massive amount of dodge, which means you can use people with less accurate swings but higher DPS just utterly take advantage of him. His resistances really aren't that high compared to most other bosses in the game and a couple of monsters as well. With his move resistance being so low, you can watch my Necromancer video, you can just reliably pull him forward and then smash him with heavy hitters, or if you're using Bounty Hunter, you can then smash him with Mark. The boss is not very hard that way. Overall, the skeletons he summons for the first two levels are really weak. Once you get to the third level, you can get a little weird about the bone generals and stuff, but once again, you should be able to pull him forward and ignore those massive protection bonuses. And one of the biggest killers is he only gets one action per turn, making him probably one of the weakest bosses in the game. The Necromancer rises a dud at easy. Wolf. Verdict. Easy. The dungeon itself can be kind of hard based on you have to go through a set number of rooms with set number of enemies. You always need shovel heroes and when you get there, his bombs really hurt. If you haven't seen my Wolf video, all you need to do for Wolf to pretty much beat him is bring one man at arms. That's it. One man at arms and one person who can heal that man at arms. Whether that's an occultist, a buffed up crusader, or a vestal, it doesn't matter. Anybody who can do like 8 to 10 heal per turn, you'll be able to defeat Wolf easily. All the man at arms does is protect the person from the bomb, and your other two damage dealers can pretty much reliably focus down Wolf depending on his add summon and who he's protecting at the moment. With the bombs only doing 10 to 13 damage per turn, Wolf fizzles out at an easy. Profit. Verdict. Easy. I believe there's a lot of ways to handle the profit. Like most, you can do a damage reduction build, you can do a heavy dodge build, or you can do a heavy mark build, and all these should be able to work reliably. One of the more risky ones might be the mark build, because you're kind of depending on crits, and once again, if you don't get the misses and stuff, you could have people go on death store and die to fulminate. But besides that, I've done the marking strategy reliably, so it's not too bad. If you do the damage reduction build, you can do 50 to 70% of his damage reduced. And this would make Rubble of Ruin not hit very hard, it'd be like 10 to 20 maybe. And then that should be easily healed. And then you can either chop through the pews or have a damage individual or two to shoot him in the back row, whatever your strategy and lineup you like to do with that. I have individuals almost died due to Fulminate's Blight damage, but I've never actually lost anyone yet. The profit isn't too hard, you might lose a hero there and there, but overall this fight isn't too complicated. Siren. Verdict. Easy. You might have nightmares of this one because you might imagine your damage dealer going over there and then doing damage to you or stunning you or bleeding you. Anything that your person can do against the enemies, it feels really good against you because they can get those nice 20-30 crits. The only issue to this is, if you bring Anticorium, she takes them at least 83% of the time. She should take them all the time, I don't know why she took the Bounty Hunter in my one video, but at least 83% of the time the Antiquarium is going over to her side, and this fight gets easy. She has a lot of HP and a lot of dodge, and I'm not sure why, because she's already kind of strong in theory, but if the Antiquarium strat didn't work every time, I would definitely place the Siren on at least medium, due to her high HP and the ability to take others. Another easy one is the Hag. The Hag is annoying, she has low HP, but if you get a couple lucky crits, you can literally kill her in probably like 5 to 7 attacks, depending on your pot luck as well. 
you can dodge being grabbed. It is fairly accurate at level 3, but for the most part you should be able to burst through the hag with any decent luck. In my video I got really bad luck, she dodged like 3 of my attacks and I get a single crit, but I still didn't lose anybody and I still killed her. Her HP pool is just pathetic. It's one of the lowest out of the level 3 bosses. I know she takes someone to the pot, but it really doesn't do enough to save her and her abilities are eh. Like I said before, even if you get really bad luck, you should be able to avoid losing somebody. I have lost people to the hag because I've had someone spill out of the pot and then get immediately meat tenderizer. It does happen, you do lose people, but those are in the bad RNG runs. The hag isn't someone who'll make you scratch your head too hard though. The Flesh. Medium. I struggled with the flesh because there's an interesting, with so much RNG, it makes it hard to know what you're going to be fighting against when you fight against the flesh. The flesh could give you a heart or two every turn, and that means you could really smash into the squishy parts of it. Or it could give you just 80% and 70% protections, and you really gotta rely on that dot damage working. And most of the segments actually have a decent amount of bleed resistance. It sits around like, I believe, 60 to 80%. So if you have a chance of 140%, you're talking to only 70 to 60% chance. And that means at least one segment's gonna resist your bleed every round, which is, you know, a lot of damage that you're gonna miss out on in the later stages. The reason why I was creeping towards easy on this boss is I've actually never lost anybody and I've never had someone death store. But there's always a point in this fight, and that's why I kept it medium. I feel like it's all gonna fall apart. Because the Mauls of Life, the front heavy head, is just biting you so bad and then you're getting stunned by the Zephyr things in the back and you're just waiting for the tick out because you can't physically damage through this unless you bring a Grave Robber, but you're not going to bring three Grave Robbers to smash through all that protection. So obviously a Plague Doctor or any any other people with really good bleed, like a Jester, especially a Houndmaster. I love Houndmaster for this fight, it makes it so easy. A Hellion's great. Anyone who can do damage and bleed is nice, or if anyone who can do AoE, blight, or bleed, such as I said before, the Plague Doctor and the Houndmaster. And just one more reason for why this fight stays medium, depending on who gets stunned in this fight, it can really set you back at least a turn or two, which you really can't afford in this fight. Because if your Houndmaster gets stunned, imagine all that DPS you're going to miss with Hound's Harry, because you get damage on the obviously, the raw physical damage, but you're also going to get all that bleed damage, which really adds up really quickly. So if that gets even stalled a turn or two, that's a huge deal. The crew. Verdict? Easy. I was debating on putting the crew into medium, because if you forget the boss you're going against, or if you get really unlucky, Heave 2 is nightmare fuel. I love saying that, but it really is, because just watching an individual sit there and watching the protection rise on the crew and watching the crew heal herself is just beyond aggravating. Every single hero turn, he gets more health. Not every turn, every single hero turn. However, if you can dodge the chain or get an individual with a high enough speed so when the round starts, they can kill it immediately, it's not so bad. If you go in with a game plan, it's almost hard to fail to the crew. The only way you do it is maybe your first time going in, you're like, I take, I took in one of the worst lineups. What I used to do, why the crew, I was tempting to put it medium for me subjectively, is because I used to take in Crusaders and Lepers, and they have slower speed, which means they go at the end. And they were also my major damage, which means they had to kill the chain. And then he would resummon, reheave two, and you can see where this cycle just begins. So I wanted to put a medium, but the more I thought about my last fight with the crew, it was so easy with the Jester. I just had him dodge everything and then full fire on the crew. And the crew really has no strong abilities that make you begin to worry other than Heave 2. So depending on RNG and lucky dodging, this can maybe be an easy medium fight, but right now I'm leaning more towards the easy than hard or medium. Swine King. Verdict? Medium. The Swine King could be easy. There is some strategies I believe would make the Swine King easy. I haven't played around with them yet. I believe a damage reduction strategy, and if it works, would make this fight a practical joke. I believe if you could reduce the Swine King's damage by 60 to 70%, his obliterate bodies and masses would only do like 10 to 12 damage, which should be easily healed. And obviously that damage reduction lasts multiple rounds, and then you'd be able to burst through him without worrying about too much damage. This isn't really the path I took. I either take really high crit and high heavy hitting because the dodge of the Swine King is pretty low and he'll probably never dodge you. What really makes this fight hard and what you have to think about is Wilbur. You obviously can't hit Wilbur. 
At third level, you really can't reliably stun him without a lot of trinket buffs. And even then, Wilbur gets two actions, which means you can stun him once, but he's still going to do something on that second action. So it means you only miss one. So you're either going to get stunned, most likely, or you're going to get marked. You take your pick. The only time this fight gets really dicey is depending on the RNG of the damage and the RNG of the stuns of Wilbur. The good news is the Swine God hits hard, but he doesn't hit often, which means when he slams somebody, you'll have at least a turn to heal them back up, either off Death's door or give them a decent amount of HP to live from Wilbur coming up. The Swine God himself really shouldn't take more than three to four rounds to kill, depending on your luck. He has 250 health, but he's like I said before, he's not going to dodge, so if you just get all your people buffed with either a campfire ability, or obviously if they have an ability themselves, you should be able to burst through in about two to three turns, and your party should be able to live through that if he spreads out the damage. The only time this gets really dicey is if the same two individuals keep getting slammed, because there's no way to keep them off Death's Door at that point, and you're at the mercy of Wilbur not targeting them. Brigand Pounder. Verdict? Hard. I picked the Pounder at hard. The Pounder could be medium, the Pounder could even be easy. And the reason for that is all of the RNG that goes into this fight. There's a lot of RNG. I'm just going to go over a couple of it. The matchstick span HP isn't too high and can usually be one-shotted, but his dodge is 35. And that can reduce people's chance of hitting to like 75 or 80%. And you're like, oh, that's not bad. But if you miss once and then you get unlucky and resist the stun where you don't get the upper end of your damage on RNG and then he doesn't die, that's already two people in your party that win, and he's still alive. This means he might light that cannon. And then you're at the second part of the RNG. You either get a misfire, you either get a boom. And then you get the more RNG, because if you get boom, you can still possibly dodge it. The cannon's accuracy is a little bit over 100%, so it's actually not too hard to dodge if you plan for it. Another aspect of RNG is whether or not he's going to summon brigands, because he doesn't have to summon a brigand every time. There's a 66% chance according to the wiki at level 3. That means if you get like a turn or two where he doesn't summon a brigand, that's full fire onto the brigand pounder, which can really jump you light years ahead. The easy way to do this is slow and steady, make sure the matchstick man always dies, if you have extra attacks, clear the adds, and eventually you wait for that gap where he doesn't summon an add, and you can start going to town on the brigand pounder itself. But with all that RNG and obviously just the insane massive damage of the Pounder when it does fire, puts this fight at hard. Shrieker. Verdict. Hard. I would have put the Shrieker into the medium category if it was not limited on time. The fact that you have to kill a Shrieker within pretty much four turns makes this an incredibly tough fight and an incredibly RNG dependent fight. There are things you can do to try to reduce the speed or increase the accuracy of your people, but you have to watch how much time you focus on accuracy increasing versus the raw damage. Because if you take a turn or two to increase accuracy or reduce the dodge of the Shrieker, you only have about a turn and a half left to do damage, and now you're depending on critical RNG most likely. The times I've done this reliably, and it sounds really weird, I take in two Lepers, usually a Jester, and then a Vestal for healing. I just have the Jester Battle Ballad and I have the two Lepers buff themselves for more accuracy and damage because there's really not too much more preparation you can do. You can do a mark where it reduces the dodge or anyone else who can reduce dodge of an individual. The debuff resistance is 70% which isn't exactly high but it's really not that low either because it only leaves maybe like a 65% chance to get that dodge. And you also have to hit him with the ability and like I said before most heroes don't have great accuracy against this boss. The damage it does can get pretty brutal with some of those abilities. It can hit you with a massive damage. The stress damage it does to you is really annoying. Just a friendly word of advice. Don't really kill the Shrieker. Take in like maybe level 4s and level 5s who can hopefully live through the fight and also damage the nest and destroy it. Destroying the nest will allow you to get up to 5 puzzling trapezohedrons, which means you can either get a base of 10,500 gold if you get 3, or if you get all 5 stay with me here, you get 17,500 gold. That's nothing to cough at, because you really don't take in that many provisions anyways, so when the Shrieker comes, look at it as more of a chance to earn a lot of money now, rather than a nightmare. It's really annoying, because it's going to probably add a lot of stress damage, especially when it flies away. You're going to have to put all those heroes in the stress-related facilities. However, the 10 to 17,000 gold you're going to earn for about maybe 2 minutes of combat is probably worth it. Please let me know where you disagree with this list. I'm sure there's some of these bosses on the easy you think should be medium, and some of these bosses on the medium and hard list you think, no way, there's no way they could be that hard. 
Let me know your personal experience and why you think this should be lower or higher. As I said before, this was a very subjective video. I normally don't do these, but for this instance, rating things easy to hard in a game with so much RNG is very hard to do, so I did throw in a lot of my own opinion and experiences and the strats I've found. Some of these bosses are significantly harder your first time going into it because you don't know how the boss interacts. Once you play through a boss about 4 or 5 times or on your second playthrough, you begin to figure out which bosses are a lot easier. You begin to figure out which ones give you consistent troubles. Thank you for watching so much. If you're confused on why some of these bosses are ranked so easy, go check out my other guides and maybe you'll see why I rank them so low. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below.